is an Austin-based singer. He was in a 1960s group called the 13th Four Elevators. They started in 1965 and had a pretty big national hit with a song called You're Gonna Miss Me. They were really, uh, to a lot of people, myself included, the creators of psychedelic music. They were very influenced by the psychedelic experience, wrote and played from what they'd learned from that experience, and uh, recorded four albums for a very small Houston label called International Artists. They toured out to San Francisco in 1966 and set up a residency at one of the ballrooms there. So a lot of people always felt the elevators were from San Francisco when in fact they were always based in Austin. They had a lot of uh, run-ins with the Texas authorities over certain things and uh, came to a pretty sad end. Rocky Erickson went to the hospital for the criminally insane in 1968 where he spent four years. When he was released, he uh, became a practicing reverend for a while, even though it was a church of his own making, and did a large amount of preaching. And in 1975, he re-entered the rock and roll world with a single produced by Sir Douglas of the Sir Douglas Quintet. And that song was called Red Temple Prayer, Two-Headed Dog. From there, Rocky uh, was very influential to the burgeoning punk movement in Austin and therefore the world and became sort of a forefather to those people in his approach to music. Played a lot with several punk bands around Austin. Eventually made another album in 1980 called Rocky and the Aliens, uh, toured America and England, came back to Austin, made a few more albums for smaller labels, and in the mid-80s, unfortunately, fell prey to some pretty serious mental problems. The Rocky Erickson tribute album, the first idea for it came to me in uh, March of 1990 when I was down in Austin, Texas, and I heard that Rocky had had some more mental problems and was presently in a mental institution. And it seemed like so many bands I've talked to or met over the last 10 or 15 years have all been just highly devoted to Rocky's music. They either play one of his songs in concert or have recorded one of his songs or just really like to talk about what kind of influence Rocky has had on them. So when I got the idea when I was in Austin, I came back to L.A. and I spoke to Sire Records and they said, uh, gave me a preliminary okay to start inquiries and one of the first bands I called was R.E.M. because I knew that in the past, when they have been in Austin touring, they've hooked up with Rocky and spent some time with him. I walked with the zombie. I walked with the zombie. I walked with the zombie last night. Some of the interesting uh, people I came across when I started putting the tribute record together af after R.E.M. agreed to do it. Uh, several bands contacted me uh, and let me know that they had been playing Rocky Erickson, Erickson songs in their sets. And one of those bands was Jesus and Mary Chain, which I was not aware of how uh, much influence Rocky had had on their music. But it turns out that they had been encoring with one of Rocky's songs, Reverberation, from the 13 Four Elevators. Other bands, like the obvious groups of several Austin bands, like Boy Dog Pondering, Luann Barton, Doug Somm and Chris Thomas were all very excited about being on the record because being from Austin, they really had a, a real strong contact with Rocky, either personally or musically. So those groups immediately came to mind. Other bands, uh, even from as far afield as, say, England, Primal Scream is a new English band that I could not believe how much they love Rocky's music. They even, uh, in their song, they sampled Rocky giving an interview once, and uh, if you listen close to their track, you can hear Rocky saying a few choice things. Seems like in the last few years, tribute albums have become uh, much more popular. This record, I think, differs a little bit from a lot of tribute albums in that the persons it's a tribute to is basically an unknown artist, a real unsung, he unsung hero, if you will. Uh, that was a decision I made to do this because I think Rocky really deserves a lot of credit for having a huge influence on a whole lot of rock and roll people. And I thought it would be fun to do a tribute record about an unknown person because in that way you not only get to hear artists you might know doing new songs, but you really get to discover a whole new person. John Wesley Harding is an English singer who is a real student of American music. 
So when he heard about this album, he called Sire Records and said he'd like to do a song. And he and his producer went over a bunch of different songs that Rocky had written and chose one called If You Have Ghosts, which comes from 1980 when Rocky was really in the midst of his most uh, otherworldly life. And recently Wes was in Los Angeles, him and his band, which include the Paley Brothers, Andy Paley being the producer of this track, cut a video for that song, If You Have Ghosts. The Judy Bats are a young band from Knoxville, Tennessee, and when they heard about this Rocky Erickson tribute album, they called Sire and said they'd be interested in doing one of Rocky's songs, so we sent them several to choose from, and they chose a tune called She Lives in a Time of Her Own. They were recording their album in Woodstock with producer Richard Goderer and did this song over a weekend and recently in Knoxville came up with a video for She Lives in a Time of Her Own. When it looked like we were going to make our deadlines to release the album in October, I thought a great thing to do would be to put it out on Halloween because Halloween is Rocky's favorite day of the year. And once we decided to do that, I also thought that maybe to do an in-store appearance at Waterloo Records in Austin would be perfect because so many of the artists live in Austin and there was a few English artists that are on the record that were traveling that were going to be there. And I heard that Rocky, there was a good chance that he could also show up to sign records. So once we had committed commitments from Doug Somm, Luann Barton, Chris Thomas, who all live in Austin, John Wesley Harding and Bobby Gillespie of Primal Scream were going to be in Austin, I got word to Rocky that we were going to do this and asked if he would come. And I was told that he probably would. So that Halloween day, we all gathered in Austin, and about uh, the in-store was to start at 5 o'clock, and about 5.15, people started showing up. Uh, around 5.30, the record store was full, and all we really needed now was Rocky Erickson. And about 10 minutes later, well, around quarter to 6, Rocky came in, looked as happy as he could be, walked up to me and said, well, I'm here, can I go now? And I explained to Rocky uh, very nicely that there was you know, close to 300 people in the store who either wanted to see him or have his autograph. He got behind the counter and started signing records and just for the next over two hours was a real gentleman about it. He signed everything that